In the late 1990s, um, a few vessels from New Zealand started exploring the Ross Sea region, looking for toothfish. Uh, they found a reasonable resource at that stage, and from that point, the fishery started to grow. Initially, it was exploited by New Zealand fishing vessels, but under the management of Camelot, it has expanded to include vessels from a number of nations. There's a big Desosticus, a big, beautiful Desosticus moss and I. That's what we're looking for. We got a good one here. There are a number of toothfish fisheries in the Antarctic region. Patagonian toothfish, primarily in the northern latitudes of the Antarctic area, and Antarctic toothfish, which are in the southern latitudes of the Antarctic area. The fishery in the Ross Sea is almost entirely Antarctic toothfish. A few Patagonian toothfish are taken in the northern area of the fishery, but most of the fishery is Antarctic toothfish. It's also the largest Antarctic toothfish fishery in the Antarctic region. The fishery operates over the summer months. During the winter, the area is ice covered, and it's very difficult to gain access into the area. So the fishing boats head down at the beginning of summer, end of spring, and fish over the summer months. The fishing is conducted by vessels with long lines. The long lines are long lines that are set on the bottom of the seafloor with baited hooks attached. The lines are left down for a period of six to ten hours and then retrieved, hopefully with some fish on the end. Fishing in the Antarctic region is not allowed to expand at a rate beyond which the information supports that fishery. And the Antarctic toothfish fishery in the Ross Sea has grown as information about it has increased. The current catch limit in the Ross Sea is around about 3,000 tonnes. At that level of fishing, we expect the population of spawning stock to reduce by about half over the next 35 years. It's important for us to understand the effect of removing fish as catch has on the population. How much will that change the population and is that catch level sustainable? At the moment, a lot of our information that we collect on the region is collected via the, the fishing boats in the area. There's an extensive tagging program for toothfish, which we use as our primary source of information. Currently, around about 25,000 toothfish have been tagged by fishing vessels in that region, and we use the recapture rate of those tagged toothfish to try and understand what the population size is. We use this in our demographic models to try then and understand what impact the catch will have on the population and how it will change the population. CAMELA is the Convention for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources. The CAMELA Commission is the body which meets on an annual basis to formulate policy and advice about how to manage the marine living resources in its area. New Zealand scientists have been actively involved in providing the scientific advice for the management of the Antarctic toothfish in the Ross Sea since 1999. We've developed many of the methods and models that are used in the Camelar environment at the moment, and these are now being applied to fish stocks other than the one in the Ross Sea. The information we're getting back from the tag data and from other information that we monitor from the fishing would suggest that the catch level at the moment is sustainable. And it's sustainable to the point where we think the population will decline slightly over the next 35 years and then be sustainable thereafter. So Camelot is thought of in fishing circles as being a reasonably conservative limit to fishing.